Voices in My Head is one of the most interesting, unique games I have ever played. And over the past few weeks as I've been playing it, I've had some people ask me, what did you think about the game? And then I say, oh, it's really interesting. And then they say, ah, did you not like it? What? No, I just said it was interesting. Why does interesting mean not good to some people? Interesting is good, especially in this world where there's so many games out there. Interesting is really good. I like this game. I love this game. I love this interesting game. You want to know one of the main reasons I love it? Because it's interesting. Hey. Even the theme of this game is unique and interesting. This is a guy named Guy or named Guy if you want to imagine him as French. There's no reason you would, but the rule book doesn't prohibit it. Guy has robbed a bank and you know this, but you're not playing as Guy. You are playing as the voices in his head that are trying to sway him in one direction or the other. For instance, if you're playing as Honesty, you want to convince the jurors that you're guilty. You want to come clean. But if you're playing as Selfishness, you want to lie and convince the jurors that you're innocent. Every role has a different objective, and there can be multiple winners and losers in the game based on whether you accomplish your objective or not. I also like that there are basic roles that you can use when you're playing a game for the first time or more advanced roles that you can use when everybody has played before. It adds some replayability to the game. In Voices in My Head, one player plays as a prosecutor. They'll have a number of trial cards behind their privacy screen and each round they're going to pick one card. That card is going to control the story of the game and the actions of the round. Other players play as Voices in Guy's Head. Each turn, they will deploy a control marker to one of the regions of Guy's brain, trying to control that region. Whoever has more points on their control marker in a region will control that region and get to do the benefit of that region. So you can even try to knock other people's control markers off so that you can control a region. Like for instance, white might do this on their turn. Bye-bye, yellow! Now, white has control of instinct. All of those regions are going to allow you to do things like add innocent tokens onto jurors, add guilty tokens, maybe add these unknown tokens or look at unknown tokens that have already been placed down. Ultimately, you are trying to place tokens up here to accomplish the objective you have on your secret role. Do you want jurors to be to think you're innocent? Do you want them to think you're guilty? All of those types of things. You'll even have strategy cards in your hand that you can play at various points to get you special benefits and abilities. There are so many different aspects of this game. There's storytelling in it. There's dexterity in it. There's hand management. There's strategy. There's comedy. And I've never seen a combination of all those things. That's why I call this game unique, because all of those things mixed together feel like nothing you've ever played before. And while I wouldn't describe this game as like a raucous party game, it is definitely funny. There are bursts of laughter throughout the game because the storytelling is really good and very well written and written in a funny way. Here, I'll read a card as an example. The defense lawyer tries to discredit the eyewitness accounts. Guy, do you, by chance, have a twin brother? Hmm? Do you want to respond, uh, no? Or do you want to respond, I do! My identical twin lives right next to the bank! I love the silliness in this game. And that's one of the things I appreciated about the most. This game knows that it's wacky. It knows that it's silly. It is self-aware and it leans into that silliness. So if you go into the game with a silly mindset, you're going to have a great time.